<laughs> hey guys, so it's day three of the Fortnite of Terror. Um, yeah, man, I just, I feel like, I feel like absolute shit. I don't know why. I'm just like exhausted and fucking like wigged out and stuff. So I'm going to be doing this, uh, this whole little spiel from the, from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna recline on the floor and tell you guys about Black Candles, which is an awesome movie. Like, I don't know. A, but don't worry about this. It's like, this is pretty much just me in my natural state anyway. Like, if I had some wine over there or something like that, it's just, you know, I generally just lay around on the floor and I'm like, because <laughs> I'm into, like, just like a giant garbage person. You know what I mean? So here we go. This is a garbage man time, right? It's like, got my, got my little head on the pillow here. I'm in a bathroom. <laughs> so if it's that way, that, that, that's the tiles that you might not be able to see. I can't actually tell. Anyway, so Black Candles by Jose Ramon Ferran. Ferran? No. Jose Ramon Loraz. Sorry. From 1982. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> this is a weird one. This is, uh, Black Candles is definitely, like, a rarefied taste. Uh, it's real hard to, it's almost hard to describe. It's kind of like, if you're in the mood for, like, a movie that's kind of dirty and kind of spooky, this one would probably be, like, what you're in the mood for. It's kind of like, it almost feels like, um, like a Rosemary's Baby meets Emmanuel, <laughs> like, you know, to, to give it, like, a movie pitch like that, and people really do do that. That's how you pitch movies. You, um, you do two movies, you say, like, it's like this, plus this, you know, and that's how, that's, like, how every movie gets sold, apparently. But yeah, like, it's, seriously, it's like, it was made in 1982, right, by, uh, this, uh, Jose Loraz guy, who, you know, he's, he's pretty cool, like, I've seen a few of his movies before, and it's weird, because they pretty much all, they all take place in a, in, like, a manor house in the English countryside. I don't know, like, a lot of his work does, because before he was a film director, he, like, wrote, he did comic books. He did this comic book called Paul Ferran. And, yeah, like, I don't really know what they're about, like, because, you know, I, I, I hadn't actually read any of them, it was, it was just, uh, like, I did some research, you know, before doing this, this video to see what else this guy had done, you know, other than movies, because, like, his, his movies just feel kind of weird, and the reason is because they're framed like comic books, I think, like, um, he uses, like, a lot of the same techniques that he used to compose, like, the visual, like, imagery in comic books, so his, his movies look really cool, but much like the comic books that he writes, they all, like, take place out in the English countryside, <laughs> like, in matter houses, I have no idea why, I don't know if he, like, owns one, maybe, you know, or owned one there, you know, or, like, knew a guy who had one, that's a possibility, I don't know, it's weird, it's just a weird location for, like, half your fucking movies to take place, and anyway, Black Candles, right? Sorry, that was a that was like a four minute ramble about English countryside houses. Oh yeah, okay. So, what this thing is, right, is some lady's brother dies, and she goes to England to his like mansion to like investigate it, and she's just, like everyone there gets like involved in like weird like naughty late 70s, early 80s, like, witch cult behavior, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there's, like, a lot of movies from then, from, like, probably about, I'd say, like, 1968 onward, that, like, take place in England or something, and it's just about satanic witches, like, getting their tits out, like, that's all, you know, and, like, this definitely falls into that genre, however, it might be, like, a little bit more extreme, because that's, it's pretty much, like, I recall this, I, I saw this movie first, like, three years ago, and I figured I'd, I'd re-watch it for the, uh, you know, for the Fortnite of Terror, um, 
but it is like it's not as creepy as I remember it. It's not like it's spooky as I remember it being. I'm pretty sure what happened was the first time I saw it, I sat through the first spooky ass twenty minutes of it, and I was drunk or something, and I fell asleep, and I woke up for the last spooky ass twenty minutes of it, because the middle of this movie, it's just it's like, it's like kind of Euro softcore porn. It's like. Emmanuel story of oh kind of you know it's definitely not consistently hot but it's sure is naked <laughs> you know what I mean there's just like a ton of this that's what this movie is about it's like just a ton of nudity and uh like some vaguely witchy shit like there are a few really intense parts of it like there are two scenes in this that actually just like even make it a horror movie because like if you know if this wasn't a you know, if you're not, like, scared of witches, you know what I mean? And it's not the 17th century anymore, so a lot of people are, right? You're not going to find this movie particularly petrifying unless you're paying really close attention to a few scenes, right? Like, there's one towards the beginning of the movie where, like, she gets embroiled in this witch cult. Like, she doesn't know about it, right? Like, the main character doesn't know about it. She doesn't, like, suspect... Well, she kind of suspects that something weird's going on, right? But, like, the lady that she's staying with gives her, like, these weird herbs and, like, a tea that, like, knock her out. And, um, she ends up... <laughs> they end, she ends up having sex with a goat in this, like, ritual, right? It's not, like, obviously... It's not real goat human sex. Like, I would not be recommending a movie with that in it. But, like, you know, there's definitely a goat. There's definitely banging... <laughs> going on in this barn and like they bring her out there and like hold her down on these weeds and stuff and the goat like fucks her because they're they're trying to make some potion out of it and like the dialogue surrounding it it's awesome it's just like because <laughs> they're like doing like spooky goat sex rituals in this fucking dungeon and not dungeon uh barn why did i say dungeon because it seems like some shit like that would happen in a dungeon but um yeah and they're just like we require his seed for the potion. <laughs> There's all this like weird shit like that going on. So lady gets fucked by a goat. That's like the prime spooky part of the movie, right? And it kind of goes downhill from there. There's like um, it kind of becomes like a pot boiler at that point. It doesn't, you know, it's not bad. Like he's still like. Loraz like keeps up the he keeps up a good spooky vibe throughout the whole thing, you know. Like there's so there's there's enough just kind of weird atmosphere and like kind of crazy editing and dream sequences to like kind of keep you going, you know. And there's like this whole other conspiracy of of this witch cult that's happening, and like you see them like doing shit sometimes, but it's never really like too bad. It's pretty much just like orgies and freaking like drunk sex and shit like that and like barns uh yeah and it goes on like that for like a really long time they like they keep giving this um they keep giving this lady like the the magic herbs and stuff and she'll just then they keep doing like dirty stuff to her like while she's like, not conscious from it which is actually pretty horrifying in itself but it's not like horror movie horrifying it's just like real world nasty bad horrifying but yeah like so that shit happens you know i think there's yeah there's like a few like deaths in it but they're not really you know i mean it's not it's definitely a horror movie but like as stated it's like emmanuel meets uh <laughs> meets rosemary's baby which came out like Rosemary's Baby, Baby came out, like, 12 years before this, and it's weird to have, like, a, kind of, like, a, it's not really, like, a knockoff, but a lot of the ways in which, like, the scenes are shot, like, really, really remind me of that movie. There's a lot of, like, satanic witches, like, standing around in a circle, like, and they're poking their heads into, like, a, like, a really, like, wide-angle camera, and you get that distortion, you know? Mm -hmm that, like, lens distortion on the side because they're, like, just, like... And they're just, like, grabbing people and carrying them around and chatting, and, like, this lady keeps waking up, and, like, with vague, like, recollections of 
like weird shit happening to her like while she's like passed out or whatever and she has this dream about fucking her brother and she's running around it's all in um it's all in like super soft focus like the like rosemary's baby was then again like that like emmanuel movies are like that too and like story about it was like that and oh man even that uh that weird ass marquis de sad movie was like that it was like it's that weird like soft focus shit that makes everything look sort of glowy you know what i mean so it's like that the whole time and there's that really vulgar goat sex part and there's you know like the the sex on it it's, it's not like x-rated but it's like it's like a little bit more explicit than most movies like go with it you know which is cool you know i don't like i'm not you know i'm not like a prude or anything i'm not i'm not like worried about that but you know, just so you know, like, if you, if you decide to watch Black Cattle, <laughs> um, yeah, sexy time happening, it's, but it, it's definitely, like, late 70s, early 80s sexy time, like, when people are, uh, making out or whatever, they do that stiff-lipped, like, tongue flickery thing, it's, you, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> it's bad news, oh, man, you know, they're, like, they, like, wrap their lips around their teeth, and they, like, eh, eh, they, like, they, like, lick each other's necks and shit, and, like, they it's, like, super awkward, and, you know, like, the, the actors, like, they're having a really hard time <laughs> trying to look like they're into it, you know, but, yeah, all that shit happens, ton of weird, kind of gross, early 80s sex, bad haircuts, um, soft focus, like, cool edited dream sequences, it's, like, weird, kind of, witchcraft orgies and shit like that and then at the end like the other spooky scene is like one of the guys who's kind of like tangentially involved in this cult or whatever he decides to turn him in so they fucking they sodomize him with a sword like it's really bad they kill him by sticking a sword like all the way up his ass and he just fucking sprays all this blood out and it's really gross That's but that's the only other like horror movie thing in this you know, like, everything else is just kind of, like, weird, like, social horror, which is, it's cool, but, you know. On day three, I think this will be a, this, this will be a good break from other, like, actually horror, horror movies, you know? And at the end, like, they, uh, they do the, they do the Nightmare City thing. I don't know if anybody's seen that. That's an awesome one. I'll probably talk about that one sometime this week. It's very cool. Like, it's, it, that's actually one of my favorite zombie movies, but... You know, if you haven't seen that, I don't want to give the ending away, but it's like, oh no, you know, shit's happening in a strange way, everything's weird, we're going back to the house, you know, crazy shit. But yeah, it's, um, other than that, they have some cool, uh, prints of, like, woodcuts from actual, like, books on magic and shit from, like, back in the day, like, when they go, when they go into the house, you can see a bunch of those. And they talk about them, like, pictures of demons and stuff that, like, you know, are, like, kind of, like, legit, like, researched. But other than that, like, yeah, man, Black Candles, you might like it. If you do, I like it. It's a fun movie, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it might not be the best. And if you, if you're freaked out by stuff like goat sex or, like, people, like, being drugged and then, like, fucked, you know. Or, 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 like, satanic shit, like, satanic wizards, like, running around, like, being, like, spooky about things, or, like, witchcraft and stuff like that. If you're freaked out by that shit, but not too freaked out, then this is gonna be, like, a really frightening movie for you. <laughs> but if you're too freaked out by it, you should probably not watch it, because that's basically what this movie's all about. You know, if it, like, if it'll, like, bring up, like, like, really bad feelings that, you know, you don't want to fuck around with, then I would not suggest this film, but if, if not, then fucking go for it, Black Candles, yeah, I, th I really think you'll enjoy it, you should probably, you know, maybe partake in your favorite substance, <laughs> like, your favorite mind-altering substance before you get into this movie, though, because there it is, it does kind of drag, it does, it, it drags out into, like, Euro sex movie, territory like really bad before any other like horror shit happens 
But yeah, okay. So I guess I'm done with day three of, uh, of uh, the Fortnite of Terror. There's, what, like 11 more to go, which is awesome. Anyway, so yeah, watch Black Candles. Have fun with it. Uh, I think I'm going to legitimately go to sleep.